Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to talk about regular expressions in Oracle. Regular expressions are used for pattern matching. We can also do simple pattern matching using the like keyword but for more complex scenarios the regex functions can be very useful. Oracle provides a list of these functions. Today we are going to discuss these five functions which are shown on the screen. So let's get started. So for example, we have created the CTE called strings. It contains some string values. And now our requirement is to find out all the records which have a J in the column value. So we can simply write a select statement saying select str from our CTE, which is strings, where now this can be achieved with a simple like statement as well. So if we just say where str like and percent J percent and execute this query, we are going to get all the records in the output which have a J in them. So this can be implemented using the like keyword because it's a simple pattern matching. But just to see how the regex p underscore like function would work in this case, let's just do use that as well. So to this function, you first need to pass your column in which you want to search for the pattern. Then you have to specify the pattern. Now the pattern that you want to specify here is you want to find the character J and there can be one or more characters following this J. So we are going to add a plus here and now we're going to execute our query. So in the output, you can see we got all the records which had a J anywhere in them. Now, if we want to specifically say that we want only those records which start with a J, we're going to include a caret sign over here and execute this query. And now what you're going to get is only those two records which start with a J. So this caret sign over here indicates the beginning character. Now let's say we have another scenario in which we want to find out all the column values which have two consecutive R's in them. So what we're going to do here is we are going to say R because that is what we are searching on and we want to say that it occurs at least two times. So for that we are going to use the curly brackets and we are going to say it occurs two times and at least two times so we just do a comma and leave the ending range as blank and now we execute this query and we can get that one record which has two consecutive R's. You can also specify an ending range over here so let's say we would have said we wanted all the column values in which we have two or three consecutive hours so exactly matched by the number of hours then we can say two comma three in the curly brackets and run that query so let's say we had one more hour here and we had two hours here and now if we execute you will get both these two records in the output now let's say we want to do a case insensitive search so in that case let's just change this j to a small to a lowercase j in the example and now we want to find the j character anywhere in the string and and we're not concerned about the case sensitivity so we just pass a small i as the second as a third argument for the regexp like function and run this so we have the output irrespective of the case now if we remove this i from here and run it you will only get the two records which have a capital J in them. Now another check that you can do is you can find out the string value, you can find out the column values that are only alphabetic or which only have numbers. So for numbers you can include a range within the square bracket so you can say 0 to 9 so that will be all the numbers and if we run this query we get the two outputs which have numbers in them. So for digits, there's another way we can specify them is within the square bracket, instead of writing the range zero to nine, you can just paste colon digit colon and execute the query and you'll have the same results. Similarly, for alphabetic characters, you can paste the range A to Z. So that will be the capital letters. And if you want to include the lowercase as well, you can put lowercase A to Z and execute and you will get all the outputs which have any characters, any alphabets in them. Another way to check this is to use the word alpha, so colon, alpha, colon, and it's going to give you the same results. 
So one use case for the regexp underscore like function can be to validate specific patterns like a valid email address. So let's just convert this into a simple email address, john at gmail.com. And you can make a simple pattern like let's say that we only want alphanumeric characters. So lum plus escape. So we want the at character. So we're going to escape the at again plus. Again, we expect any alphanumeric characters. And then we expect a dot. And again, alphanumeric characters and any characters after that. So this is a very simple pattern that we are matching. Obviously, in real life scenarios, the pattern matching would be much more complicated than this. But just to show as an example, if we run this, we are going to get that one record which has the value in the pattern that we required. Now let's move on to the next function, which is the regexp underscore instr function. So now this function is going to first find the pattern and then return the position where that pattern occurred in the string. So now we are going to use this function in the select query. So we are going to say regexp underscore instr and we are going to search the string str. The pattern that we are looking for is a double r and we are just going to execute this query. And we've got the position where this pattern occurred. So for the first record, there was no match for that pattern. So we got the position as zero. For the second record, the pattern started at position three. And that is what you have got for all the remaining records. The pattern was not found. So you got a zero in the output. Now there are other arguments that we can pass to this function. So let's say we wanted to start searching from the second position. So you can put two and let's run it again. So we get the same results. Now let's say we wanted to start searching from the fourth position. So when we search from the fourth position in a string, we have no record where a double R occurs after the fourth character of the string. So we are going to get a no match. And here you can see that even for the record Jerry, the position now is zero. So let's take it back to the start of the string. Now the next argument that can be passed is which occurrence of the character you want. So let's say we are, we want to find an R. Uh, let's just change it to a single R. And we want the second occurrence, the position for the second occurrence of R in a string. So you can pass two and execute this query again. And you can now see that the output is the position is four because that is where the second occurrence of R occurs in this string. So this is how you can use the regexp underscore instr function to find the position of a particular pattern. So based on this, you can imagine that there can be much more complex implementations with these functions. We are not going to go into the complex scenarios in this video because this is more like an introductory video, but we'll do some videos later on with some complex scenarios using these functions. Let's quickly move on to our next function, which is regexp underscore replace. So as the name suggests, this is going to find the pattern and replace it with a particular substring. So I'm just going to change it here to regexp replace. And let's say again that we want to find R, two consecutive R. So instead of defining it like this, we are going to define it within curly brackets. We are going to say at least two occurrences of small r and what we're going to replace this with is let's say a star so I close the brackets and run this query we want the ending code for this and run it again and you can see that the double r in jerry has been replaced by a star sign so this is how our regex replace function works again you can pass more arguments to it telling it from which position you want to start the search and which occurrence you want to start searching from and which is the occurrence that you want to substitute the value for. Next, we are going to look at the regexp substring function. Now, this is similar to the instr function wherein it finds a particular pattern in a string, but the instr function returns the position of that string and this function is here is going to return the substring itself. So it's like a substring, the general substring function that we use. The only difference is going to be that you're going to be able to search a pattern using this function. So again, we're going to search for occurrences of two consecutive R's in any of the column values. I'm going to run this query. 
And you can see here that for Jerry, it has returned the substring RR itself. Whereas in case of an INSTR function, it would return the position, the starting position of that pattern. The next function is the regexp underscore count function. Now the way this function works, it is it counts the number of times the pattern occurs in a string. So for us, the pattern double R or consecutive R, small r, occurs only once in this string. So I'm just going to do a regex count here and execute this query and you can see that the number of times the pattern occurs is 1. Now let's say we had some more value added and let's say one more time we had the RR. Now this is capital R so let's see whether it catches it or not. I'm going to run it again and you can see that it still just counts the number of times the pattern occurs as one. Now let's try to make this as a case insensitive search. So what we are going to do is pass on some more arguments to this function. So first I'm going to pass an argument one, which simply means that we want to start a search from the first character of the string. And then I'm going to pass the another argument, which is going to be a small i, which is going to indicate that I want my search to be case insensitive. So now it should be able to count two occurrences of consecutive hours. So we're going to run this again. And you can now see that in Jerry, it has found two occurrences of consecutive hours. So these are the regular expression functions in Oracle that can be quite useful for complicated scenarios. And this is a brief introduction on how they work and how they can be useful for data pattern matching.